In this episode of Modern Greaser, you're gonna look at what a $7.99 relay can do to keep your child safe. And did you know that on average, 37 kids per year die in hot cars? and 54% of them are due to people forgetting that their children are in the cars. This is a major issue. Now, in having a child safety feature on a car seat is nothing new. In fact, there are plenty of companies offering solutions to keep children safe. Even companies like GM and Nissan are currently incorporating systems in some of their vehicles. Showing consumers that you can retrofit any car with a $7.99 part should bring awareness to the fact that all car companies should be incorporating this type of technology in their vehicles. So on our car seat, when I go to disconnect the car seat, there's a little connection right here. And when I disconnect that, that informs the automobile that there's no baby back here. So when I so baby is locked in the seat, we're gonna see what happens if I walk away from the car and forget about it. This first scenario is gonna show you exactly what it's gonna look like if my baby was locked in the seat when I got out from driving the car. Ugh. Adulting is so hard. I'm so forgetful right now because I only have two hours of sleep. Oh wait. Why is my car beeping? Why is my car beeping at me? Oh my goodness. I know why my car is beeping. Because I forgot that my child is in the back seat. Oh, my child is in the back seat. How crazy. So the car actually alarms me, letting me know that the child is in the back seat. So let's check out that scenario with taking the child out of the seat. Oh, I'm glad that I got three hours of sleep last night because I remember to take my old Teddy out of the car. Let me go lock my car. Oh, it locks like normal. That's because all I had to do is put a connection on the baby seat that was tied into the door pin on the automobile so that when you go to lock your car, it sends off a signal. Now you could tie this into a horn, you could tie it into a standalone siren like you would for a car alarm. And so you see it here, little Teddy is safe because I spent less than 20 bucks to connect the baby seat into the car's alarm system. And I will go through the whole process in the rest of this video to show you just how easy that was to install the relay and make everything work on this Toyota. And it would also be the same for different Lexuses, Toyotas, things like that. And depending on what type of door pin to trigger, things like that, you'd have normally open, normally closed setups on your relays. It should be very simple for pretty much all the different cars out there. So you really only need some basic tools to do this to your automobile. A uh, multimeter like this, you could use a test light, it really doesn't matter. A set of crimpers are a little not necessary. You can pretty much get everything done with a pair of wire cutters, some tape. And okay, so this is actually electrical solder. So make sure you're getting the right solder for electrical. And I'm actually gonna use some heat shrink tubing that will actually make some nice tight connections. As you can see, I'm not doing this in a shop. I'm not even pulling my car out of the garage. I'm doing it on my slope of a driveway here. That's nothing special you have to do. So we are gonna take advantage of the door pin and our key fob. So if my door is open and I go to lock my car, oh wow, Toyota is gonna beep at you saying, hey, ding dong, your door is open. So if I can take advantage of that same beeping sound while my child is in the back seat, we're good to go. And in the description, I'm gonna include all the parts that you need to do this insulation and all the tools that you need if you don't have them. One thing that we're also gonna start out and do and I didn't mention is you're gonna need a fusible link. What happens is, is if you had a wire that contacted bare metal, it could actually melt all of this coating and start a fire in your car. So if you have a fusible... On this 4Runner underneath the dash here, there's a plug and you have 12 volt power constant going to the white and you have 12 volt ignition with the yellow and blue here. So we're just going to simply tap into it. We're simply going to take our fuse, tie it into here with some solder. So the way this works is we have 12 volt power, which we're testing right now, which will be coming from our ignition going to pin 85. Pin 86 is going back to ground. Then we have our green and yellow, which is split between 87A and 30. So when the ignition is on, the ignition will end up cutting the blue and yellow in half, which will simulate that our door pin is closed so our dome light won't remain on. When we shut the ignition off, it closes the pin, connects the ground, and will hopefully work. And so I have my one connection, let's say on the left side of the baby, and that's gonna come to my black and red 
door pin connection here. All right, so we simply have two wires in the back. One wire is going from here to my red and black wire that is connected as my door pin. So this is our door pin of the car, what turns the dome light on and off. This one here is the ground. And so when that door pin sees ground and I try to lock my doors, it's gonna think the dome light is on. The problem is, is when you go to drive somewhere, you don't want the dome light on. So we have to break that connection. Your other side of the harness is gonna loop through your relay and then go to ground. And what that relay do is gonna do, is gonna cut this in half. It's gonna break that connection so that when you're driving down the road, you don't have your dome light on. So my other side of the harness comes through here and I've got it in a yellow and green color. And these yellow and greens will go all the way up front. You can see it up there to my relay. And then it will feed back the green after coming back and looping through the relay will come down here to the ground. So all it is is a ground connection that is getting cut in half by our relay. So back here my connection is made is my ground connection comes out and I have two wires going up to the relay. So I have three wires coming from the front of the vehicle back here. One is my door pin and two others are the relay. So I'm not going to leave this relay dangling. I'm going to put a uh, sleeve on here, tape this up, and I'm gonna secure it with some zip ties. I'm gonna finish this up, put all my trim back, and we'll be good to go. Believe it or not, there is a correct tape to buy out there. Don't go buying that 99 cents electrical tape. It is not worth your money. There's a Scotch or a 3M tape that is really, really good. I'll make sure everything looks nice and clean. So let's say it's late at night. For some reason, your car's not locking and you have a loose connection somewhere. Just come disconnect this door pin right here and you'll be all set. Or um, you could probably disconnect the baby seat, but this is your fail proof here. This is the one that ties in the entire system. If you disconnect that, you're set. Now that we have a nice clean look to our kick panel, we are gonna put everything back together. So we can mount a switch to the side and switch it on and off every time we take the baby out, but you're not gonna be thinking about hitting a switch. And the problem with that is then you'll get out and you'll forget it and then the, the alarm will go off and you have the baby in your hand and you'll be like, screw this thing, I'm not gonna do it anymore. And it's just another step that you have to do. If it's integrated in the harness and you're unplugging it and plugging it in as you're harnessing up the child, then it's one less behavioral thing that you're gonna mess up. So. so we are gonna test this electrical system and see if the relay and grounds we have in place are gonna do exactly what we want it to do. So there's a couple different sequences we have to do. So the first one is, is we'll go connect it as if the baby is in the seat, then we'll break the connection, we'll turn the ignition on, so there's a couple different things we have to do. For testing purposes, I'm gonna have my harness right here where I can have baby out of the seat or I can have baby in the seat. So for this test, I have the baby is in the car seat, the harness is clipped in, and I'm being forgetful and I'm walking away. Thus, if I lock my doors, I should get the alarm sounding that's as if I have a door open. Okay, my car will do that and it won't stop doing that. And that's saying, hey, your baby's in the back seat. And I bet I could break it. Oh, look it, if I took the harness off, the alarm goes away. So the next test we need to do is I have all the doors shut is let's say I took baby out of the car seat and I'm going into the store. So I have the baby's harness disconnected. I should be able to lock the doors and not get any alarm. Perfect. Now the last test we need to do is baby needs to be buckled in the car and I need to be able to start the car and make sure the dome light goes off. As you can see, the baby is buckled into the back seat. You know why? Because when I hit the lock button, I'm getting the alarm. So right now my dome light is in the on position. I should be able to start the car and the dome light should go off. As you can see, the dome light went off and the relay is doing exactly what it needs to do. When I shut the car off, the dome light's gonna come on every time I shut the car off because it has the relay that is engaging it, which isn't a big deal. Most cars do that anyways. If I go to lock it, baby's in there. I just undid the car seat, we're good to go. Thank you for enduring this episode of Modern Greaser where I showed you how to install a $7.99 relay in your automobile. I don't suggest everybody going out and buying a relay and throwing it in and doing that. I'm just showing you how, how easy it is to integrate this into existing vehicles. And that current car company should have no problems making this a standard for their vehicles. There's a few companies out there that are incorporating this technology in the cars and it should be all the companies out there. So make sure you're buying cars that have this integrated technology and all the other companies out there should step up their game and include this in their newer vehicles. It is something that is of dire importance. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you hated this video, make sure you hit that like button. 
Be sure to comment below. I don't even care if the comments are about bananas or peanuts or walruses. I don't care. Comments are great. Make sure you comment below. And to make sure you don't miss any future episodes of Modern Greaser, be sure to click the subscribe button. I'm going to have lots of cool content coming your way, so don't miss it.